guest tonight is a comedian and writer. He's recording his brand new comedy album, Kitchen Bird, on August the 2nd at Kaz Rye Top's Dirty Secrets in Melbourne. Please welcome the very funny Jack Druce, everybody. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Hello, thank you very much. Uh, it's good to be here. I, uh, I grew up in a small town called Jeringong, right? And um, I, no one's ever surprised when I tell them that I'm from a small town either. People just sort of assume that about me for some reason. I don't know what it <laughs> is about how I come across. Like, I've been here 10 seconds. You can already, like, kind of tell I was in the Scouts. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> some people will sort of change up their look as they get older. My look has stayed very consistently on boy about to have the adventure of a lifetime. <laughs> That's... <laughs> But uh, people always want to know like the big difference between living in a small town and the city. As far as I'm concerned, the only difference is that in the city, TV ads are meant to be relaxing. <laughs> you know, you watch a TV ad here, it'll be a very calming experience. It'll be like, hey, come on in to Kensington Tiles. <laughs> We've got a huge range of tiles, experienced staff. We've been in the area for 25 years. So come in, come in. Come into Kensington Tiles. They do like a little sort of cute tagline at the end. Like Kensington Tiles, where craftsmanship meets experience. It's just, just very nice and calm. But for some reason, every time I go back home, all I have to deal with is just non-stop. Jericho Tiles! Jericho Tiles! Jericho Tiles! Gotta get on in! Get in! Jericho Tiles! Get in now! And the screen is just covered in explosions for some reason. It's like... Like a superhero made of tiles, just like punching a dollar sign. Just, uh, uh. Dollar signs like also made of tiles and on fire for some reason as well. It's so unclear what's going on. There's like a host of the NRL footy show is on a dress in a hoverboard, like waving at you. <laughs> they sort of, they still do a tagline, but it's not even cute anymore. It's just insane now. It's just like, Jerrygong tiles, fuck you. I'm going to live forever. And you're like, who's, who's this guy? I don't know. Uh, Especially strange because I feel like small towns is the only place where you don't need that sort of aggressive advertising. I mean, it's like, dude, there's one place people can get tiles. <laughs> That's it. You got one place. The whole ad could just be like, Jeringong tiles. What are you going to do? <laughs> huh? What are you possibly going to do? Drive to Wollongong? Didn't think so, idiot. Jeringong tiles. That's all you need. Um, I do watch a lot of TV. Uh, there's a show I'm really obsessed with at the moment that um, I've been watching this documentary about O.J. Simpson, which is just amazing, because I don't know anything about him, really, in his life, and it goes through, like, his whole career, like, all his football stuff, then all the murder stuff, and then his life up until today. And there's a bit in the middle that I'm just obsessed with, because there was a while, I think about two, early 2000s, where O.J. Simpson got to host a prank show. <laughs> right, someone let O.J. Simpson host a prank show. It's called Juiced. You can watch it on YouTube. I'm obsessed with Juiced. Because Juiced has got to be the only example of a prank show in history where the reveal of what is actually happening is so much worse than the, pro <laughs> the prank you thought was happening. <laughs> yeah, it's just like him popping out at the end. It's like, ha ha, you thought someone was stealing your golf balls. But really, it's me, murderer OJ Simpson. <laughs> yeah? What a fun prank. Um, so... <laughs> I've been playing a lot of those, um, a lot of those weird hypotheticals games with my friends at the moment. You know those sort of things where you go like, "Oh, would you, would you do this gross thing for a million dollars?" Like those kind of things. And I feel like it's a, it's not a good conversation to have. It's also not a good way to have a million dollars. You know, if you think about it, like you couldn't, you couldn't have any millionaire friends. You wouldn't have anything in common with other millionaires. You'd be trying to like fit in down at the yacht club. You'd be like, "Oh, how do you make your money? Were you oil tycoon? That's amazing. What about, what about you? You?" Professional golf player, that's wild, that's so cool. Uh, me, how to make my money? Yeah, funny story actually, uh, my housemate gave it to me because I had sex with the surviving cast members of Frasier. So that's, <laughs> you know, that's my rags to riches story. Best one we ever did though, was we were playing that game Fuck, Marry, Kill, right? Which I'm not a huge fan of, I feel like it's a pretty boring game. If you don't know it, it's like one person says three people, the other one says like uh, which one they'd have sex with, which one they'd marry, which one they'd kill, that's it. And uh, we're going that, it gets pretty dull, about 20 minutes in, because we're getting a bit bored, we decide we're gonna have a bird round. <laughs> right, I, don't know. I don't know if we're familiar with a bird round in Fuck, Marry, Kill, just, just standard rules, three different types of birds. That's all we're doing. <laughs> But we're taking it very seriously as well. Like, my friend's got to come up with the birds. He spends ages thinking about it. He finally goes, all right, Jack. Rooster. Pelican. 
peacock. <laughs> as soon as he says peacock, I'm like, what do you think I'm an idiot? I'm fucking that peacock, of course. <laughs> of course, you think I'm insane? Like that's the, I've, look, I'm sensing a bit of judgment on my <laughs> immediate decision to have sex with this peacock. This is a hypothetical world where you have to have sex with a bird. That's what we're talking about, all right? We've seen peacocks, seen the elegant feathers and the plumage, and if, if you're gonna look me in the eye, tell me you pick anything other than peacock, grow up, all right? That's the call. <laughs> So I say to my friend, all the confidence in the world, yeah, man, I'm locking in Peacock. He gets this big crazy grin on his face. He's like, Jack, buddy, you have walked right into my trap. <laughs> those peacocks you're talking about, the ones with all the feathers? Yeah, that's just the male peacocks that have those. You're having sex with a male peacock. <laughs> he acted like he really got me good. <laughs> like he tricked me so good. And I just sort of had to say to him, like, man, I don't know how to explain this to you, but if you're having sex with a bird, <laughs> no one cares that you're gay. Right? It really, really doesn't matter at that point. Um, like if someone had to confide in you and get something off their chest, they were like, hey, you know, I trust you, I want to tell you this, sometimes I have sex with birds, your reaction wouldn't be like, oh my God, what gender? What, <laughs> what gender of bird are we talking about here? Oh, girl birds, yeah, you should have said something. Nice one, man, cool. Like, uh, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, uh.